Good morning, class of 2026, and welcome to your first technical week. My name is Mrs. Jackie Mockamer, and I'm the Vocational Technical Coordinator. That means that I'm the administrator that directly oversees the Vocational Technical Program. This is not how I anticipated that our special sessions would go this week, but alas, it is what it is. Technology to the rescue. Hey, class of 2026. Um, I wasn't originally gonna talk about this, but I just finished recording the video and I think I have a couple minutes. So I thought I would take this opportunity um, where I'm obviously absent from school um, to talk about attendance and what happens when you miss school. So, yep, I'm homesick, I uh, wasn't feeling well on the weekend, um, decided to take a COVID test and it turned out positive. Vaccinated and boosted and still got it. Lucky for me, I just feel like I have a really bad uh, cold, sore throat, stuffy nose. Um, but what that means is I need to stay home for five days. And then after five days, if I'm feeling well, I can return to school and wear a mask for five days. So that's the plan for me. So what's the plan for you? when you miss school. I think it's really important for you to know that state law requires that all students meet 90% attendance. That means you can't miss more than 10% of the days. Um, there is a difference between excused and unexcused absences. Excused, um, there are a list of excused reasons in the handbook and illness is one of them, but it does require documentation. So the note from going to the doctor or the results of your COVID test. Um, and you do not need to make up the time. However, super important to know, all absences require makeup work. Whatever it is that you missed, you need to make it up. And sometimes, like today for me, I'm not gonna be able to just do over the thing that happened in class. So you might be given an alternative assignment. Think of today's video as my alternative assignment. So quick recap, if you are sick, stay home. Get the required documentation in on time. And always, regardless of what reason you are absent for, be responsible. Ask for and complete the makeup work. If you don't, your grades will be affected, and we don't want that to happen. I want to say congratulations again on your decision to attend Bristol Plymouth Regional Technical School, BP Tech. This morning, we'll take a first glimpse of vocational technical education. But before I get started with our agenda for this session, I wonder if any of you noticed the video that was playing as you entered this morning. The video was all about kindness, and I want you to know that the attitude you bring, the choices you make, and how you behave, and how you treat others, and how you treat your teachers, will create the environment and culture of this school. I hope that you will help to make BP Tech a friendly place, one that both students and teachers continue to enjoy and be part of. So this is our agenda for this morning. We're going to talk about what exactly is career vocational technical education. We're going to talk about the shop placement process, exposure, shop safety, and the shop locations. Prior to orientation, I sent out a welcome video to you and your folks. I hope you all had a chance to see it. As you're beginning your first technical week, I think it's a good time to talk about how BP Tech is different. It's all about career vocational technical education. It's what makes Bristol Plymouth unique, and it's all about preparing students for life. BP Tech is different from the other high school options that were available to you. BP Tech is one of only 26 regional vocational technical high schools across the state of Massachusetts. People refer to career and technical education by a variety of different names. Here at BP Tech, we tend to call our technical programs Tech Week and Shop, and we follow the CVTE frameworks, which is highly specialized technical education. Everyone wants 
wants kids to be ready to take on the real world, right? So what's the secret? Say hello to CTE. CTE is career technical education. Maybe you've never heard of it, but CTE gives learners an academic foundation along with technical skills and hands-on experience in a whole bunch of different areas to help them get ready for the real world. Think of CTE as a high school experience, but with even more value because it fills a big gap for a lot of students. CTE programs directly connect learners in high school and post-secondary with employers through internships, apprenticeships, and other meaningful on-the-job experiences. When it comes to CTE, more than twice as many CTE parents report being satisfied with internship opportunities. That means a lot of doors are being opened for kids. So here's the bottom line. Parents want their kids to find a career they can be passionate about. Kids want the same thing. And when you think about the real world, what could be better than having learners enter a field they know is right for them with a ton of hands-on experience? It's all possible thanks to CTE. CTE, learning that works for America. To learn more, visit careertech.org. Here at BP Tech, you will spend 50% of your time in your technical program. So I like to call what we do CTE on steroids. And as I said, it prepares students for life. But in the video I sent last week, I said it's all about another word, a four-letter word. Can you think back? Does anyone remember what that four-letter word is? Related to the holiday that we celebrated yesterday. Yes, we're all about work. I mentioned that you will be fulfilling all of the college prep requirements just as you would in a traditional high school. But you're also going to be spending 50% of your time in your technical program. So that's going to take a lot of work. And your training will all be about preparing you for entry level or higher positions in the field. And in today's economy, hard work, and strong skills also brings you some other four-letter word benefits. Cash. Coin. Can it make you rich? Well, we have to talk about what makes a rich life. Is it a large luxury home? Is it a fast, fancy car? Is it going on luxurious vacations? Lots of folks will tell you that to have a rich life, you do wanna have financial stability, one that gives you a good quality of life and allows you to pursue your interests, but also, a rich life means that you have personal fulfillment and that you are living your life in accordance with your core values. We're going to be learning about core values and BP Tech's core values throughout this first term. And certainly, high quality technical education is going to help you have financial stability in your life. So you see, there's a lot of value to CTE. You're going to be able to explore careers and find things that you're passionate about. You're going to gain real world skills that you'll be able to use. And you're going to have lots of options for college and career success. So whether you came to BP Tech already knowing what it is and what program you want to be part of, or whether you didn't even realize that BP Tech was a Voc Tech school. Everyone will get the benefits and value of being a CTE learner. Everything we do here, we are working towards preparing you for the world of work. The world of work demands strong technical skills and strong academic skills, but it also requires something else. And these are employability skills. Employability skills include working with others, 
being able to communicate, and manage your time. And we'll be working on developing those skills throughout both your technical and academic classes. Employability skills also includes knowing what is professional dress and also what is acceptable use of cell phones, which is why BP Tech has such a strict dress code and cell phone policy. So the value from CTE comes from putting in the work. By knowing and meeting the expectations, you will be well prepared for life. CTE stands for Career and Technical Education, but to its students, teachers, community advisors, and employers, it stands for a lot more. Calibrated. CTE more. Experience. Craftsmanship. Taxing. Enlightening. Customer service. Tabulating. Engineering Marvel! Camera work. Talented. Exercise. I do like cutting wood. I do like welding. Uh, I can fix my own car. Hey, maybe I could make a living at doing that without uh, putting my parents in debt. Certification. Treatment. Electrical. Cooperation. Tap. Exhausting. Hey. 3D printing. Event planning. So, get real. CTE stands for success. So I hope that you see that there are a lot of exciting opportunities here at BP Tech. And you may be wondering, well, how will I know what program I'll be in? Let's talk about shop placement. The shop placement process has three phases. And right now, we're at step one, exposure week. And that is one shop week long. It will be followed by exploratory, which will be eight shop weeks long. And then finally, you will be placed in your program that will be your program for the remainder of your career here at BP Tech. And that doesn't take place until mid-January. So don't worry, you don't have to make any long-term decisions for a while yet. So this is exposure week. During this week, which goes from Tuesday till next Monday, you're going to visit all 19 shops. You're also going to complete a career interest inventory with the guidance counselors in the library. That's going to help you understand a little bit more about what interests you have and how they relate to the different skills and occupations. Every day, you're going to experience four different shops. You'll spend about 73 minutes in that area. You're also going to have one special presentation in the lecture hall with me for 42 minutes. This week, it's going to be virtual, but I'll still be there. Every day, your schedule is going to vary, and the times will not align with the bell schedule. Don't worry too much about where you have to be. All of the teachers and the juniors are going to help you get from place to place. So during this exposure week, go dressed for success in long pants and closed-toed shoes, and be sure to bring your safety glasses. You may or may not be doing activities on the shop floor, but if you go prepared, you'll have the best opportunity for success. Also, be sure to bring your Chromebook, headphones or earbuds, and a pen or pencil, something to write with. We're absolutely going to need those for the special presentations in the lecture hall, so make sure that you have them. As you go to each of the different shops, 
figure out what the, their dress code is for exploratory because you want to make sure that you're following the appropriate dress code. Pay attention to the variety of opportunities available in that career path. And most important, keep an open mind about the possibilities. Imagine yourself in each of these shops and think, what would you like about it? And what would be challenging? Be sure to ask any questions that you have. The next stage of the shop placement pro process is exploratory. And during exploratory, you're gonna spend one full week in eight different shops. You will be graded while you're in shop. And those, that grade will play a big factor in your final placement. Which shops will you explore? Well, at the end of the exposure week, you're going to rank your top 10 in order of preference and you'll definitely visit your top three at some point throughout the eight weeks. And then the remaining shops will be scheduled based on availability. Now, Mr. Montesanto goes to great lengths to try to get you to see as many of the shops that you're interested in as possible. You're gonna learn a lot more about this on our special session next Monday, where Mr. Montesanto will come in and explain the process in more detail. For now, you want to focus on exposure and keeping an open mind. Before you head off to your first shop experiences, it's really important that we take a minute to talk about safety. Safety is job one, all the time, every day. I'm going to take a few minutes this morning to talk about some of the common safety standards that you'll experience in all of the shops and you will get additional safety training in each technical area. It is super important that we keep everybody safe at school. And we also refer to our shop areas as workplaces. So we need to keep our school and our workplaces safe. It is super important that you understand what the standards are, that they've been established for your protection and that it's essential that you follow these standards. If you choose to endanger yourself or others by violating the safety code, you will be removed from shop and there will be disciplinary consequences. That's how important safety is. One element of safety is understanding evacuation in the event of a fire alarm. In each room, the exit routes are posted, so make sure that you are aware of what these routes are. When you hear a fire alarm, it's important to exit the room quietly according to that path. Move quickly, but do not run. And once you get out, stay with your class. And when you get outside, line up for roll call at the designated area. Your teacher will be calling for roll call once you get outside. And when you're outside, stay off the roadways and pay attention to see if there are any other instructions. Personal protective equipment or PPE. You'll hear about this in just about every shop that you go into. In general, PPE is equipment that you wear that helps to keep you safe. Each shop will have its own safety equipment that you will need to use. Your first piece of PPE that you already have are your safety glasses. Make sure that you have them so that you can wear them when you are instructed to do so. Failure to use PPE when you're instructed to do so will result in you not being able to participate in the shop activities and could also result in disciplinary measures. As I've already mentioned, each shop does have a dress code. This is above and beyond the um, regular school dress code. And it's again all about keeping you safe. It has to do with the things that you wear, the, what you wear on your feet. It has to do with maybe your hair being tied back or what type of jewelry you have. So again, become familiar with the dress code for the shop 
so that when you are in it for exploratory, you can follow the rules and be safe. One of the best things about CTE is that you will be using industry standard tools and equipment. It is very important that you use the correct tool for the job and use the tool correctly. You have to make sure that you have been trained on the use of the tool and you cannot use a tool until you've been trained on it and have received the instructor's permission to use the tools. There is safety equipment in each shop so that you can be prepared for anything that happens. These uh, pieces of equipment include telephones so that you can call for help if necessary, fire extinguishers, the evacuation routes in the event of a fire drill, eye wash stations in the event that something gets into your eye, as well as pow master power switches that will turn off power equipment if such a need arises. Shop areas clean is a very important part of safety and each time that you are in a shop area, you will be expected to keep cleaning up after yourself throughout the day, as well as participating in end of day and end of cycle cleanup. This is very important to keep a safe workspace. Pay attention to the directions provided by the shop instructors about what the shop cleanup procedures are and what your roles and responsibilities are. This includes often returning tools as well as physically cleaning up tabletops and floors. Other common shop safety standards, we've referenced PPE and proper attire. Another very important aspect is that horseplay is prohibited. That means no fooling around. There is um, way too much opportunity for accidents to happen, um, horseplay will be dealt with as a safety infraction. So please be sure to save horseplay for after school hours. Even with being as safe as we all try to be, accidents do happen. If an accident happens and you are injured or a, a teammate is injured, please be sure to report it directly to your instructor. And if you happen to notice something that's unsafe, report it to your instructor before an accident occurs. Thirteen percent of America's workforce is under 24 years of age. Each year, thousands of teen laborers experience safety-related injuries on the job. From 1998 to 2007, there was an annual average of 795,000 unfatal work-related injuries among teens. Every nine minutes, a teen is injured on the job. It is extremely easy to reduce the number in work-related injuries if all safety procedures are followed. If required, wear eye protection, gloves, ear protection, respirators, and gloves suitable for the workplace. An injury can be avoided with just a minute of safety practice in the workplace. Remember, the best practice is safe practice. So far, we've been talking about safety as it relates to our physical safety. But safety also includes our social and emotional safety as well. It is the expectation that all BP Tech students will treat each other and the faculty and the staff with respect and courtesy. Any behaviors that are, does, do not support that will not be tolerated. All of the behaviors listed on the right are behaviors that are not tolerated and will be dealt with disciplinary consequences. You can see the student handbook for more information. If you feel that you are a victim of any of these behaviors, 
be sure to reach out to an adult, whether it be a shop teacher, an academic teacher, an administrator, or the assistant principal. We want to make sure that everyone feels safe here at BP Tech. So our last topic for this morning is actually figuring out where are the shops that you'll be rotating through all week. And you'll notice in this um, map that the shops are all around the outside of the building. And there are some across the driveway. This may feel like a pretty big building, and it is, but once you understand its layout, it'll be a lot easier for you to get around. The first thing that I want to point out is that basically the main building is just one great big rectangle inside a rectangle. So it's very easy to um, find your way, just going to keep going down one hallway or the other. You may have been given some of these tips by the student orientation leaders during freshman orientation, but I'm going to review them here so that we are all on the same page. There are, of course, some special rooms that you need to be aware of. Right now, you're in the cafeteria, and down the main hallway, you will also see the lecture hall and the library. Continuing down that hallway, you will see there's the assistant principal's office for Mr. Mosier, the main office, um, the curriculum office is down this hallway, and then kitty corner from the curriculum office is the career center, guidance, student services, and the nurse. So the rooms are all numbered. Again, looking from where we are here in the cafeteria, if looking forward is the 100 section of the building. And as you go from east to west, is when you go from 100, 200, 300, 400, there is a hallway that separates the hundreds from each other. When you get down to 400, this kind of uh, surprised me when I first got here, was the 500s are all the way down here. It's the um, gym and the health room. And then there's the 600s, and then finally the 700s. It's also helpful to know the numbering pattern. If you look up on the walls in the hallway, you'll notice at the very top there is either a gray line or a blue line painted at the top of the hall. And the gray line means you are in the part of the hallway that has classroom numbers 00, 00 to 50. And if you're on the blue line, you have classrooms numbered 51 to 99. And that explains why you're coming down this hallway looking for 253 and you see 212 and then all of a sudden it goes to 300. And that's because 253 is up in the 200 section, but on the blue line where it's 51 to 99. It's also useful to note that the even numbers are the outsides of the halls, which are where the, the shops are or where the classrooms with windows are. And then on the inside are odd numbered classrooms. As I mentioned, we also have some other buildings where our technical programs are located. Looking out directly from the cafeteria, you can see the Early Childhood Center. Around the corner, you'll see the building that houses biotech, dental, and community health. The Early Childhood Building are the 900s classrooms. Biotech, dental, and community health are the 800s. The other building is the practical nursing program, which is an adult program, and students typically don't go to that building. Another thing that will be helpful to know is recognizing that as you rotate through exposure, you are just going to be rotating clockwise around all of the shops in the building, so that if your first exposure is Cosmo, then your next one is going to be plumbing. And then after plumbing will be HVAC. So that's the pretty standard rotation. However, the only thing that um, kind of sets that apart is when you have your special. Remember the special is the 42 minute period with me in the lecture hall. And that will be either very first 
or second block. There are no specials during the third block because that's the lunch time. And then it might be fourth or fifth. But again, don't worry too much. Your homeroom teacher is going to get you started on where you need to go every day. And the shops are going to help you get from one place to another as we navigate through the week. So lastly, remember that this is exposure week. To have a successful week, you should go prepared. You should listen for the variety of opportunities. And most importantly, keep an open mind. We want you to be safe and we want you to have fun. When it's time to exit, and I'll let Mr. Lopes or whomever's on duty there, I'll let you know when it's time, but this is the way that it's going to work. We're gonna exit through all four corners. So for example, um, homeroom 255 is here. You guys are gonna go out this door. Homeroom 206 is in this um, area. Gonna go out this door. And then in the back, we have 465 and 471. So when um, Mr. Lopes gives the go-ahead, um, the shop teachers will call for their home room. So um, 255 is graphics. Mr. Cavallo, when he's ready, will call for the graphics students, and they'll follow him out there. Um, 206 is going to be guidance in the library, and so on and so forth. So. The um, shop teacher will call for the um, group and take them out. And then when that group is gone, then the next one over will go and so on and so forth with this quadrant and exiting this way and this quadrant exiting that way and that way. Um, so hopefully that makes for a uh, smooth exit when the time is right. So when directed by Mr. Lopes, um, any students that are sitting in the overflow seating at the windows should return to their home rooms so that they don't get um, separated from them. And when the time um, is called, you will be exiting by home room to your first exposure block. I hope that everybody has a great day and a great experience. Um, and I will see you virtually um, tomorrow during our special presentations.